All right. Good morning, Dr. Zachary Flynn. How are you, sir? Pretty good. How are you this morning? I'm well, thank you. Thank you so much for coming out early to talk about President-elect Joe Biden's, I think we can call him that now, but uh, this guy, Mr. Biden's um, uh, ankle fracture, which was reported widely in the media yesterday. Apparently, he was playing with his dog, whose name is Major, looks like some kind of a German Shepherd mix. He's a rescue, I guess. Uh, so had some kind of a fall, then had some foot pain, went to his doctor, and then his orthopedic surgeon got x-rays and turned out to have uh, ultimately had a CT scan, which showed hairline fractures of the intermediate and lateral cuneiform bones. What we're hoping to find out from you today, Dr. Flynn, an expert in the foot, is uh, what are these bones? Is this a common fracture? Fill us in. Tell us all we need to know to understand the news. And if we ever had a foot injury, give us a sense of what the workup would be like, how doctors like you approach these problems, and uh, what the story is. So if it's okay, let's start with uh, the injury. Playing with a dog, is that a common way to get a foot fracture? Um, you know, I would, I would start off by kind of saying that, you know, fractures of the intermediate and lateral cuneiform is not a of the but um, it's also not uncommon either uh, based on mechanism of injury. And so what we don't know in detail is, you know, just walking the dog was uneven terrain. Was there a slip and fall? Did the dog go to chase something? Um, that type of mechanism um, is not uh, shocking to me based on, you know, seeing a picture of the uh, picture of the animal. It's a larger breed dog um, and that dog, you know, possibly being a rescue. Uh, we don't know its behavior characteristics. And so lots of times when we see this type of fracture pattern, it's either in an athlete or a weekend warrior or someone that's out hiking on uneven ground and possibly steps in a hole. And so based on the details that we have available, that would be my suspicion is that even though he was walking the dog, it was likely on some uneven terrain, stepped in a hole, you know, increased pace, and then uh, a slip and fall happened and then the fracture was sustained. These things always seem to happen at the worst possible times in people's lives. And this seems like uh, it fits in that category with this guy, big job ahead of him and big time in the transition. You know, Mr. Biden's uh, medical history, like all presidential candidates is listed out there. And he's got things like an irregular heartbeat and some gastritis, but there's no listing of osteoporosis. Are, are there any, underlying conditions which can lead to brittle bones that people should be aware of that would predispose them to this kind of fracture? Yeah, you know, the, the big thing that we always worry about is um, the risk factors of the of the patient. You know, depending on how we're going to treat this, whether it was conservative or surgical, depending on the fracture pattern and possible other structures involved, you always want to complete the workup of the patient. And so based on the medical history that we know, you know, his risk factors would probably be very low. Um, risk factors for, you know, osteoporosis is typically female, advanced age, uh, certain metabolic conditions that can kind of contribute. Um, the one thing that I'd probably be most suspicious of in this situation is the advanced age of the, uh, of the host. And then as well as I would consider vitamin deficiency. You know, there's lots of updated studies out there that show upwards of 70 to 80% of Americans are actually vitamin D deficient which uh, is important in bone turnover and bone health. And so that would be my primary risk factors that I'd be looking for in this specific host. Um, for, the, for the average American, you know, depending on the patient itself, you, know, you have diabetics, you have smokers, uh, menopausal females, um, patients uh, have undergone cancer treatment. There's lots of things that can possibly contribute that are unique to each individual, um, but you just need to make sure you're considering possibly everything because these these types of fractures, you know, if they are isolated, can be a little bit slower to heal. And so we want to make sure you get a good outcome. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if someone did have some of the risk factors you just talked about, advanced age, which, you know, we usually define as older than your doctor, but in this case, 78, certainly advanced age. Um, uh, if you have a known history of osteoporosis, certainly. If you So if you have these things, postmenopausal female, would you recommend uh, vitamin D supplementation at this point just to try to stay out of trouble? 
Yeah, you know, how I always treat my patients is not only are we treating this current isolated problem, but you also want to optimize and do preventative medicine as well um, because you want the patient to stay active and their dog likely isn't going anywhere um, anytime soon. And so for a patient like this, you know, I'd obtain a metabolic uh, blood panel. I'd assess the vitamin D levels. And in that postmenopausal female patient, um, I would assess when their last DEXA scan was. And if that hadn't been performed, I would get an updated uh, bone density study just to uh, assess the risk and try to optimize them as much as possible. Essentially fast forward the normal primary care and make sure everything's right. Well, let me ask you on a on a personal level, you've seen patients like this. Is this painful? Was he likely in a lot of pain or what 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 would you say? Um, you know, these these fractures can be painful. Um, the the reason for that is uh, where the, the bones are located in the foot. And so the intermediate cuneiform is right at the area of what we call the keystone. And so the second metatarsal and intermediate cuneiform joint is the most stable part of the midfoot. And so depending on this hairline fracture where it's located um, and the amount of instability, um, it can be quite, quite debilitating. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm showing now the picture of the foot. Mm -hmm. This is the medial cuneiform. Yep. The one that's not broken. Correct. And then this guy and this guy, this is the intermediate and the lateral. Yes, that's correct. So the intermediate one is in the middle and then the lateral one is just to the right of that. Exactly. And, and these so, are the bones. Yep. Those are the two bones that were fractured, um, which were described as hairline fractures. Um, as you can see, these bones are literally right in the middle of the foot. And so these are important support structures for the midfoot, which is a point of stability as the foot functions. The big thing that we'd be looking for is, is would describe the fracture. So they're described as hairline, but they're not described as far as anatomical location in the bone. Are they intraarticular, meaning does it involve either one of the joints? Typically, those intraarticular fractures are more painful and not really amenable to uh, weight bearing. And so based on the treatment pattern or the treatment algorithm that's recommended, you know, weight bearing in a boot, I would suspect that these are simple hairline fractures. Now, at the end, he's, he's broken two bones in his foot. They would be quite sensitive, especially for their first two to three weeks. And then if he does respond well to conservative care, that pain should decline over the next six to eight. Yeah, it seems like the guy's been... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Poor man. Yeah. Uh, you know, a little question about the workup. So the news reported that he had, he came in, had a painful foot. His primary care doctor got an x-ray it didn't show anything. And so then his doctor got a CT scan. Can you just comment on that moment? You've got an x-ray that's negative, but a patient who's acting like they have a broken foot, which I assume means severely painful, barely able to place weight on it, looks like it needs to be immobilized. What's the next best image? Is it CT scanning? What are the advantages and disadvantages of different approaches? Yeah, you know, that's a good, uh, that's a good question. So Fractures in this area of the midfoot involving the cuneiforms or even the Liz Frank joint, which is just uh, more towards the toes uh, based on that diagram. Um, there's a lot of statistics out there, like even in the United States, between 30 and 40 percent of these injuries are missed on initial presentation. And so if the if the average Joe or the average American, you know, sustained this type of injury, went to an urgent care or an emergency room thinking something was wrong, um, oftentimes these injuries are missed and then treatment is delayed. Um, essentially, when the patient comes in for evaluation, you know, you're, you're assessing the foot and you're assessing, you know, the injury. You have the patient describe the mechanism, and based on what he's describing, I have my list of three to five things that are going to be very common, and I'm going to make sure I assess those physically. And so the doctor, likely on examination, you know, he starts um, pushing on the president-elect's foot. He's going to find areas of sensitivity and concern, and then he'll start to stress or manipulate the Liz Frank joint. And if he's able to elicit pain on that, x-rays might be negative, but you have to assess further. Um, you know, typically in that situation, either a CT scan or an MRI is warranted. And how I kind of differentiate in my algorithm is, well, what exactly am I looking for? Um, if the Liz Frank joint is involved, you know, you have to assess for ligamentous injury as well as the possible hairline fracture. Um, as we all know, if we've had MRIs in the past, they're a little bit longer and sometimes slower to get. Um, in this instance, we need to know what's potentially wrong with the president-elect. So a CT scan 
is highly effective because it's really fast and it can give you a lot of information to where you can always support that with an MRI later. And so as you know, the x-rays were negative, but then they got the CT scan and confirmed the hairline fractures. And so upon review of that CT scan, depending on where those fractures are, we're kind of delineate, okay, do I need to support this with an MRI or can I, you know, treat this conservatively based on the fracture pattern and then move forward? And so my, my suspicion, which, you know, obviously is what kind of occurred was his physical exam was remarkable. You know, they pushed on the intermediate lateral cuneiform, they possibly stressed the spring joint, he had all positive responses, and they're like, okay, we need to know, we need to know more. So they went quick and dirty and got the CT scan, which was probably uh, a lot of the best they could do in someone whose time is as difficult to schedule and pressed as his. Yeah. So that certainly does make sense. Um, okay, great. Well, you know, moving forward, so he's got this fracture, it's been diagnosed, his foot's in a boot, the, um, and the uh, news is reporting that they've recommended treatment in the boot. Um, is that there's obviously still some likelihood that he's going to need surgery or, or is there? And if there is, what would the surgery be? Yeah, so a lot of that depends on the advanced imaging and the potential involvement of the Liz Frank joint or if there's instability across the joint uh, complex. And so right now, what we know is that there's hairline fractures in the cuneiforms. What we don't know is where they are in the bones. Are they intraarticular? Is there involvement in the joint? If he broke two bones in his midfoot, obviously there was enough force at the time of injury that there also could be ligamentous disruption. And so what, what drives that decision-making process for the provider is if there's displacement of the fracture, if there's involvement, or if there's instability of the joint complex would, would guide the surgery. And so based on the descriptive factors that we have available, if it's hairline fractures that aren't displaced or not involving the joint, conservative management's indicated, and it'll take about six to eight weeks with the protective boot. Um, say it was a more complex fracture pattern or the joint was involved or there was joint instability, um, he'd be looking at you know, either surgical stabilization of the joint, repair of the fractures, or even in times that are bad, joint fusion of the Liz Frank complex. Those surgeries are, can be quite complex, can take you know, 90 minutes to two and a half hours, and then you're looking at a three to six month recovery with weight bearing, boot, physical therapy. And so based on the details that we're given and what we're hoping for for the president elect is these are simple fractures, they're gonna heal on their own, and then he'll be ready for inauguration. Well, and he's perilously close. I guess the question everyone wants to know, so let's say he doesn't need surgery, 50 day, 51 days to inauguration, so he's right at the point where he may get released from that boot. Yeah. Something to see a president of the United States on the Capitol being sworn in, hand on the Bible with the Chief Justice, and he's got a big immobilizing boot on his foot. Right, right. You know, based on my experience with these fractures and the, and the timeline available, um, you know, I would, I would say he has a good chance to be boot free, you know, if it is a simple fracture. Um, but there's also a chance that he could still be in the boot. Um, it just, you know, some patients that are closer to that six week mark, other patients, they're eight, you know, sometimes plus weeks. And so if it's 50, a little bit over 50 days, um, you know, seven times seven, that's 49. So he's got seven weeks to kind of heal up, um, you know, based on the individual, based on his risk factors, his overall health. Um, if I was putting my money in Vegas on boot or no boot, I'm going to say he's going to be boot free if it, if it remains a simple, simple hairline fracture. I think he's going to be boot free, whether they have to take that boot off in the back and have some aid, remove it or yeah. put it right back on after he's done. Or not. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, listen, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Flynn, for your time this morning. You've been very gracious. This is the exact information that I and I think everybody would love to know to really understand what happened with this unfortunate injury. Um, you have a great day. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Uh -huh. Bye now. Bye. Well, I can't get it to stop recording. <laughs>